Pat, what's your role now in Formula One? So I'm the Chief Technical Officer of the Motorsports Division of Formula One. And I was asked some years ago to set up a, a small group uh, of engineers, particularly to look at future regulations. So we look at the aerodynamics, we look at power units, we look at the vehicle simulation. Um, we're even looking at things like cost saving and we get involved with both the technical and the sporting regulations. And what we're really trying to do is make sure that when we make decisions that there is good technical evidence behind making those decisions. So you work under Ross Braun. How do you work together? How do you set your objectives? When we set up this group in, in 2017, Ross and I sat down and we said, what do we need to do to improve the sport? What do we need to do to make the sport more exciting and more sustainable, both, both from an environmental point of view and from a financial point of view? So we identified a lot of key things that we felt needed a bit of a reset. The 2022 car is a good example of how we're starting to put these into place. So one of our very early desires was to try and get cars that could race closer together. We hear the drivers all the time talking about, oh, I got up close, but then I couldn't follow and the, the wake of the car is destroying my aerodynamics and everything. Now, in the past, people have looked at this, but never with the sort of rigor that we've applied this time. You know, we have a very, very good group, very focused. We're using some really advanced techniques and we've had time and money to do it. And so it really is a fresh approach. And yes, we see a very different car, but never in the history of Formula One has as much research gone into a new set of regulations as we have for the 2022 car. So the flip side of this is, how did the rules used to get made under the old system? Well, in the old days, it was quite an irregular process to, to get the regulations. And it's quite amusing to look at some of the very old ones. I mean, a lot of the regulations now are to do with bodywork because aerodynamics is so dominant. And I've actually got a collection of all the old regulations. And in the old days, they used to call it coachwork, which I think is a lovely word. Um, but the, the rules governing the coachwork were just a couple of paragraphs. You know, they, they really gave some maximum dimensions and there was an awful lot of freedom. Of course, that freedom was exploited. The performance of the cars just continued to increase to a point where you know, they really weren't suitable for the sort of circuits that we, we have to race on. So you get more and more regulation to start to control things. And yes, they are complex now, but um, we've got a good sport right now. So yes, it's a challenge to the engineers. There are certain areas where you don't have much freedom, but there are plenty of areas where you can innovate, where you can get your performance differentials and where you can you know, use your intellect to actually win races. So you've effectively gone from poacher to gamekeeper. How do you understand where the loopholes are in the regulations that you've written yourself? So I've been in the sport as a competitor for around 40 years. So I'm well aware of how you take a set of regulations and the first thing you do is you look for the loopholes. And I probably have the advantage or disadvantage, depending on how you look at it, of being very heavily involved in the 2009 regulations when we were last looking at overtaking as it happened. And what happened then was that in my mind, I knew what sort of car we were trying to determine. But when everyone else got hold of those regulations, they had different things in their mind. And it was a good lesson to me. So when we did the 2022 car, we allowed ourselves time to go from our sort of research heads to our competitors' heads. And we spent an amount of time which actually, because of COVID and the delay of releasing this car, was a little bit longer than we initially thought it would be, where we really turned our attention to not just looking at the research we'd been doing, but looking at the regulations and saying, right, now, how do we get maximum performance on this car? What are we going to do? And having done it, what has it done to the wake of the car? And it's a really good exercise because what it allowed us to do was to free up certain areas of the car where we had been really quite rigid in how we were applying, uh, quite formulaic how we were applying the, the regulations. And we saw that there were certain areas where you could add performance and it really wasn't affecting the overtaking. And we want to give that performance differential to the team. So we were happy to open up. So it's been a, a very good process in that respect. The last time a set of regulations were set out with some wind tunnel testing was the 2009 regulations with the overtaking worker group, which you were a part of. That worked well, but it wasn't followed up. Will that change now? 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not naive enough to, to think that the figures that we have achieved and measured in the wind tunnel, measured in CFD, which really are incredible, I'm not naive enough to believe that they will be exactly like that when the teams get hold of them and they interpret the regulations. But because we made the following car performance so much better than the current cars, that even if it gets degraded a little bit by the teams, we will still have a much, much better product. So I'm really confident that even with the really diverse sort of interpretations that we're going to see next year, we'll still have a car that is much, much better for the drivers than the current car. So how will you keep up with the teams with the changes that they're making? Well, I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to study the 2022 cars quite intensely when they come out. As I said, I don't expect them to look exactly like the car that we're sitting next to now. This was our prototype, this is what we've developed. But the regulations do give some freedom and we will see different shapes in different parts of the car. We will probably see someone who's had a really good idea that we haven't thought of. You know, I've got a very small team. Uh, I'm competing against well over a thousand very, very good engineers in the, in the 10 teams. So I'd be very disappointed if they don't see something that, uh, that we haven't seen. So we need to understand what we see. And I think, you know, after the Bahrain test, we'll be coming back, regrouping, saying, OK, what are the good ideas that we've seen? Are we happy with them? And don't get me wrong, you know, we don't want to just have a, a sort of single set of regulations that produce cars that all look identical. We're very, very happy to, to see that sort of intellect that, that drives performance, to see it brought to the fore. But what we don't want to see is things that destroy the wake of the car and make it very difficult to follow. So, for example, we've done a lot to keep the, the wake very narrow and to lift it up over the top of the car behind it. So if we see people who are putting on devices that are really producing a lot of outwash, yeah, we won't be happy about that. We'll have to think about how we regulate them out. And of course, one of the other things that has happened since, uh, since Liberty took over and since we look at, looked at how we were going to regulate Formula One in the future with the FIA, is that we have a much more democratic system now. We have a, a voting system where we, we no longer are at the behest of one team objecting to something. So we can make these changes and we can make them in a very democratic and sensible way. Will you make changes on the fly during the season? No, absolutely not. Uh, that, that would not be a, a good thing to do. Changes can be made on the fly for safety and that's the way it should be, but they should not be made for any other reason. We should, it, it's this sort of doing things very rapidly and shooting from the hip without getting the evidence behind it that I think is detracted from, from the cars at the moment. So we can't do it and we wouldn't want to do it. If we see something, we'll investigate it and then we'll decide what to do when we have the evidence. So that's the 2022 car. Looking ahead, what's the big picture? What are the objectives that you've got working in Formula One? Well, the big picture is to attract fans. You know, the big picture is to have a sport that is the most spectacular sport on the planet. I believe we have that already, or at least, you know, one of the sort of top three. But we need to make sure that we keep that up. So that's the, the biggest picture, is doing something that our fans want. But at the same time, we've got to look at all our other responsibilities. So sustainability is right up there on our list, and we're working at the moment, as I'm, I hope everyone knows, on advanced sustainable fuels, looking at much more efficient cars, looking at getting the cost down of competing so it, it becomes a closer uh, series, the cars race uh, more evenly. So there are lots of things to do. This is certainly not the, the end, this is, this is just the beginning.